Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk a lot about determinants. In fact, in today's part 48, we will talk about the so-called Laplace expansion. This is also known as the cofactor expansion or simply as the Laplace formula. This will be a rule that tells us how to calculate a determinant without using the explicit Leibniz formula. However, before we explain the details here, you already know, First, I want to thank all the nice people that support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube, via PayPal or by other means. Indeed, this support is needed such that I can make all the videos freely available. And as a thank you, supporters get quizzes and PDF versions for the videos. Now, in order to start with the topic of today, let's first look at a 4 times 4 matrix. There, you already know, if we want the determinant of this matrix, we are not able to use the rule of Saru, simply because this one only holds for 3 times 3 matrices. Therefore, a natural question is, do we have an alternative formula that helps us to calculate such a 4 times 4 determinant? And there, please recall, we already know by the Leibniz formula that we have 24 permutations, so 24 products we have to sum up. So we immediately see, just using diagonals here, is not enough to get all the 24 permutations. However, we know that in each product all rows and columns are involved. For example, if we look at all the products that have A11 in it, we already know that this row and this column is not involved anymore. In other words, only this lower right part of the matrix is still in the game. In other words, we have our factor A11 times all possible combinations of this smaller matrix here. And of course, all possible combinations we can calculate with the determinant. And now you see, this is just the determinant of a 3 times 3 matrix and there we already know how to calculate it. Moreover, we also know with this we now have covered 6 permutations of all the 24. So you see, in order to get new ones, we simply have to include a factor that was not included before. So we can go to the factor A21 and now for the rest of the product it's not allowed to use this column and this row here. In other words, we still get out a 3 times 3 determinant, but now we have to exclude the second row here. Hence we could denote the whole thing here by simply crossing the corresponding column and the corresponding row. Therefore, now we just want to calculate the determinant of the remaining 3 times 3 matrix here. And then as before, we get again 6 permutations here. Ok, and now you should see, we can simply continue here until we have covered the whole column. So the next factor here is A31 times again a 3 times 3 determinant. And for that, we only have to cross the third row now. So not more complicated as before and then you see only the last factor here remains. So to summarize that, here we still cross the first column and now the last row. Therefore here you would calculate the determinant of this 3 times 3 matrix. Ok, and then you see we have all the 24 permutations, no one is missing. And then you would say, by the Leibniz formula we just have to add them up. However, this is not correct because we also have to include the sign of the permutations. And this results then in two plus signs and two minus signs. It simply means that the sign of the permutations for these two cases here is already correct, but we have to flip it for the other two cases. Indeed, it's easy to check, just pick an even permutation here in the 3 times 3 matrix and simply check if it's also an even permutation in the original 4 times 4 matrix. And then you should see, alternating we have to flip the sign. However, there is an easy trick to get all the correct signs simply by remembering such a checkerboard pattern. And there you just have to remember that in the top left corner you start with a plus sign. And then if you go one step to the right or one step down you change the sign. And then you should see, by applying this rule, you can fill in the whole pattern. And then, of course, it does not matter how large the matrix is. Indeed, you see, the whole splitting up of the permutations 
we also could have done with the first row here. Or even with another row or another column. And exactly this calculation by using one row or one column is called the Laplace expansion. Of course, in an explicit calculation, you would use the row or the column with the most zeros. Simply because a zero would omit a whole part here. Indeed, we have learned now that we can calculate the determinant of a 4 times 4 matrix easily without forgetting any permutation. In fact, the only thing you need to remember is this checkerboard pattern, but you can easily generate that as well. Okay, then I would say, let's write down what this whole thing here means for the general n times n case. Indeed, you should see here, the overall idea is to reduce the size of the matrix step by step. This means, if we start with an n times n matrix, we can apply this procedure here to get an n minus 1 times n minus 1 matrix. Or to say it more precisely, we get n of these smaller matrices. However, now it should be clear that for these matrices, we can apply this whole expansion formula again and again. And we do this until the matrices are small enough such that we can easily calculate the determinant. This could be the 3 times 3 case, the 2 times 2 case, or even the 1 times 1 case. So you see, we have less than n steps until we have calculated the whole determinant of the original matrix. Okay, with that in mind, let's write down this general first step here. And there you already know, this is what we call the Laplace expansion. And now we apply this to a matrix A of size n times n. Moreover, please recall, we have learned before that we can choose any row or any column for the expansion. So let's start by fixing the jth column of the matrix A. And then we get a formula for the determinant of A. Namely, it's given as a sum with n entries, so let's go from i is equal to 1 to n. And then inside the sum, we first have the entry of the matrix Aij times the sign given by the checkerboard pattern. And indeed, this one can be described by minus 1 to the power i plus j. And please note here, j is fixed in this formula, so we just go row by row inside the same column. Okay, and then the remaining entry in the sum is just a determinant, and as we know, it's the determinant of an n-1 times n-1 matrix. And I call this matrix inside the determinant Aij, which means take the original matrix A and cross out the ith row and the jth column. So it's exactly the same thing we have done in the 4 times 4 case. However, now we have the general formula and you would call it expanding the determinant along the jth column. Moreover, by our discussion above, you already know we have a similar formula if we fix a row instead of a column. So let's simply do that as well for the ith row. This means now, for our sum, we would go column by column inside one row. However, this also implies that inside the sum, everything looks the same. And indeed, still we cross out one row and one column. And then, of course, the result we would call that we expand the determinant along the ith row. Okay, and with that, you now know the general formula for the Laplace expansion. However, of course, this formula is not so important, it's important that you know how to calculate with it. Therefore, I would say, let's take a look at an example here. Indeed, let's take a 4 times 4 matrix and apply the formula. And there, you should recognize that we have zeros involved, so the best idea would be to choose a row or a column with the most zeros. Therefore, the best thing to do would be to choose the second row here. In fact, this makes it really easy, because there's only one non-vanishing entry at all. In other words, we only have this factor 2 here times the determinant of the matrix that remains when we cross the first column and the second row. Hence, we can immediately put this matrix in. Indeed, if you do this on paper, 
please make sure that you copy all the entries correctly. And moreover, please also make sure that you don't forget this checkerboard pattern. Indeed, it tells you here that 2 has a minus 1 in front. So we have to include this minus sign in our calculation here. Ok, and now if we want, we can do a Laplace expansion again for this 3 times 3 matrix. And if we are smart, we will choose this second row here, because again, it only has one non-vanishing entry. Therefore, we have this factor 1 times the 2 times 2 matrix that we get when we cross this column and this row here. So as before, we just have to copy the correct entries now to calculate the last determinant. However, as before, please don't forget to use the checkerboard pattern to get the correct signs here in the expansion. And we see again, we have minus 1 again for the only term we have to calculate. And then, by putting everything together, we get plus 2 times the 2 times 2 determinant. But of course, we know how to calculate this determinant now, because it's simply 6 minus 4. Or in other words, the original 4 times 4 determinant has the value 4. So you see, by using the Laplace expansion, you don't have to remember complicated formulas, you just have to know some basic formulas, and otherwise you can just calculate everything. And then you see, even with just pen and paper, you get the correct result. Ok, and then I would say, in the next video, I give you even more results how to proceed with determinants. For example, there are very important calculation rules if you have combinations of matrices inside the determinant. However, that's the topic for the next video, so let's meet there and have a nice day. Bye!